Hey everybody, it's Mike with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. This video is going to be about how to pour a curved concrete walkway. And then it's also going to be, I'm going to show you towards the end of the video how to stamp this concrete walkway, so stay tuned for that. If you don't know me, my name's Mike Day. My channel is all about concrete, so if you like concrete kind of stuff, then go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the, hit the little bell notification too, I come out with a couple videos a week. So you'll be updated on, and YouTube will tell you when I put out these videos. So we're pouring the concrete here. This is a 4,000 PSI concrete with fiber mesh reinforcement. As you can see, we also got wire mesh in this thing. And I got Tia there pulling up the wire as we pour. If you missed the first part of this series I where I showed you how to form this with these curved forms, then... You know, make sure you check that out. I'll, I'll have a, a link for it right up above. It'll pop up here above, and there'll also be a, a video at the end of this video where you can click over and watch that video and see how we form this thing. So as you can see, we're getting most of this concrete poured out before we start straight edging. Darren's up there. He's just starting a straight edge. He's, uh, he's magging his edges first. We like to mag our edges first and get the edges all smooth get them rocks pushed down, bring the cream up. It just helps with the finishing process a little bit better too. We also use a, when we stamp concrete, we use a 3 8 pea stone mix. The smaller aggregate in the, in the mix just makes stamping it a little bit easier in my opinion. So this is a pea stone mix, but it's still a 4,000 PSI. We, we use 4,000 PSI for every, everything exterior up here in Maine. It just holds up better in the three freeze and thaw. And uh, we've had good luck with it, so that's why we use it. You can see it doesn't take too long to straight edge something like this when you set your forms right to grade. You can screed right off the top of the forms. We're using, that's a magnesium straight edge too, or screed. That's about a seven footer. You can get screeds like that, you know, right down in the description here of the video. I've got links to be able to buy a screed like that, or you could, any of the other hand tools we're using, those are all down there. So we got that one all poured. We got another little entryway we're pouring to this job too. You can see it over there. That one's got a little curve to it also. That's going to get stamped to the same pattern. This is going to end up having an ashlar slate pattern. So we added a little bit of color to the concrete, some gray color. And what I do is, you know, I go buy the color. And I'll, there'll be a link down there too where you can buy color if you want to buy color. You know, Marshalltown, I buy it from Marshalltown. They'll ship it right to your home. So you can just go to their website, buy it. If you do though, you make sure you use the coupon code EAC when you buy anything from their website. And uh, you know, they'll give my viewers 10% off, so you'll save some money that way. And then they have free shipping. But I added the color gull gray to this, so it they just wanted a darker gray. That's why that concrete looks pretty dark. So we're getting that little piece poured out. That was probably like a eight by nine piece right there. And then eventually this guy will asphalt his driveway so he'll match right up to this little entryway and also the sidewalk we did. For us, I mean, we always mag our edges first. You can see I'm magging there, I'm magging. I have a chalk line snapped and I also have some of that white ISO strip up against the foundation. And that it's it's just like a foam. So the if this slab wants to move at all, if the frost does want to move it at all, it's not sticking to the foundation. It, it'll be able to float freely. This has got really good gravel under it, so I'm gonna say the frost probably isn't gonna bother this thing at all. But we always use that ISO strip up against the foundation whenever we pour concrete like this. Now Luke's got the four-footer in there. He's screeding that with a four-footer, getting that leveled off. Ooh, 
we just need a little bit more in there. So once we get that screeded off, we'll get this bull floated. And the bull, what the bull float does is it pushes down the rocks in the aggregate a little bit and it brings up the cement paste. And that's what you want. That's the, the paste is the stuff you're finishing, that top eighth of an inch to quarter of an inch of concrete is what gets the finish on it. So that's what's important to do. It's a good it's important to have a really good bull float job. And then it makes the stamping process a little bit easier. We like using a bull float that's got curved edges. I don't know if you can tell, but that one's got rounded edges on it. The rounded edges tend to leave a little bit less of a line on each end when you're bull floating versus the one with the square edges. So there's the walkway all poured. Now it's been about an hour after we got done pouring. And this thing's kind of right out in the sun. It's 75 degrees. So it's it's the we're starting the finishing process here. And what we're doing right now is me and Tia, that's my daughter there, Tia, we're going down the edges and we're edging this. So we're rounding the edges off. And what that does, it does a couple things. It helps make the the stamp job look a little better when you're done. So you don't have those square rough edges. And it also strengthens the edges a little bit. If you just leave them square like that, they tend to chip off a little bit easier. So the edger is definitely the way to go. And then once we get it edged, we're going to end up, we'll mag float the surface before we start stamping. That's what I'm talking about right there on another video, talking about edging and magging. You know, you can't edge this too early. If it's if it if you can push your finger in this thing, you know, let's say three eighths of an inch or a half an inch or more, then it's a little too wet to start edging. It has to have a little bit of firmness to it to really give it a nice edge. And the way I tell is I just keep feeling the concrete with my fingertips. And once I can only press into the concrete, you know, maybe about a quarter of an inch and it feels pretty firm, then I know it's time to put that edger mark on there. So, I mean, that could vary depending on the weather. It could be a half an hour after you got done pouring. It could be two hours after you got done pouring. If it's in the shade and it's cool out, it's just something you got to keep checking. You can see yeah, now Abby's up there running the edger up there and I'm going to meet her and then we'll be done edging this and now you can see Luke starting to mag the surface with that funny float that's basically the same as using the hand mag but you just don't have to bend over to do it so we're magging out the surface we're getting out any bull float lines we're fixing any little imperfections in the surface in case you know there was any tiny little rock holes the bull float didn't get and that's basically the reason we mag float this out first before we stamp. We want the surface to be pretty uniform looking before we start throwing any of that dust on the stamp. That funny float's pretty convenient. It's a good tool to have, especially if you got, you know, a patio or something that you can't reach by hand. You can reach out quite a ways with that thing depending on how many handles you put on it. It takes a little bit used to getting used, you know, takes a little bit of, of play with it to get used to it. You got to make sure you tip that one edge up one way and tip it up the other way or you're going to dig in with it a little bit. You can see Abby's over there. She was edging that little entryway. So it's ready to stamp now, probably about 10 or 15 minutes after we mag floated the surface. It's ready to stamp. And you don't want to wait till it's too hard to stamp because it'll, you'll have a hard time getting the impressions from the stamp in. So again, you know, you want to be able to press in about a quarter of an inch or so. That tells you you're about ready. And then you start throwing your release agent on. And when it's ready to stamp, you know, you just, you got to lay down your first stamp. And that's what you're going to go by with these stamps. 
This ashlar slate pattern, they all hook together. They all got a little notch in one corner. And they only go together one way. So, and you can't curve the stamp pattern. So, on a curved walkway like this, you know, the pattern is going to run the same direction. So, you just have to keep offsetting the stamps to get around the curve. So, with these particular stamps, they all have a... They all have a name on them. This one, this one has Butterfield on it. So the words Butterfield are all going in the same direction each time I set one down. And then obviously that notch is always on the top left-hand corner on this this one. So that that's the way each color is going to go. Now each color, the black, the green, and the blue, has a little different set of slate pattern under it. That helps break it up from being the same pattern every time you set a stamp down. You can see the girls are helping there. They're, it really helps to have an extra hand when you're doing this. Especially when you're running one over the edge like that. You know, Tia was picking up on that other part that's hanging over the edge and it helps keep the the stamp flatter as I tamp it with my feet. So the concrete's soft enough right now so I can just use the weight from my body and a little bit of tamping from my feet to get a really good pattern impression in the concrete. If it if you pull the stamp up and it doesn't look like there's a good impression in there, then you gotta use a little hand tamper. And I got one right there, you can see it on the left right in the dirt it's just it's just right there ready to go whenever I need it so I, I may or may not need it on this you can see I'm tamping that whole thing making sure there's good I'm looking at it when I pull it up if it looks good I move on if not I put it back down and I could tamp it a little bit more So if you get on this at the right time, you can see you can move right along pretty quickly. But it's definitely a lot faster with a couple extra hands. That powder I'm putting on there, that does a couple things. It, it keeps the stamps from sticking to the concrete, number one. And the second thing it does is it adds a little secondary or antiquing type color. I'm pressing some of that color into the surface and that'll end up staying in the concrete. So I got a gull gray integral color in the concrete mix, and then I'm throwing this other color on the surface. So when we're all done, after we've washed it and cleaned it and put the sealer on it, you'll see some of this powdered color left on the surface, which gives it an antiquing effect and makes it, helps make the slate look a little more real than fake. And you could put multiple colors of release on. You could put a, a light gray. You could put black. You don't have to just use one color. You could powder it with two or three different colors if you want to. So as you can see, I'm just you just keep going. Keep working your way from one end to the other. And... I guess it does on something like this it wouldn't really have mattered which end you start on. Usually you start on you know which end is the feels the firmest. I started on this end down here by the driveway where the driveway is going to be because the sun was hitting there a little bit before it was hitting up by the house. But all in all, because this was the same load from one truck, you know, it's all drying pretty evenly. So I, I could have started from either end on this one. Throwing a little more dust, I mean, 
the dust, it's, it's, it's not really bothering me too much today, but if it was a little bit more windy out, I might have a mask on. And, you know, you don't really want to breathe that dust, so wearing a mask is always a good idea. But today, it's not too bad. I'll have a link down in the description too, guys. Uh, you know, you can get these stamps right at marshalltown.com. So I'll have a link over to that if you guys want to check out their stamps. And again, I'll, I'll just remind you again, anytime you buy something from marshalltown.com, when you go to check out, use that coupon code EAC to save 10%. I mean, that that can add up to quite a bit of money depending on what you buy. Yeah, it's getting a little firm, so it's time for the tamper. Just a little easier sometimes tamping like that versus pounding your feet into the stamp. How many of you guys, let me know in the comments, how many of you guys have tried stamping concrete and... You know, how many of you guys do it a lot? Or how many of you are thinking of trying it? You know, I've ever wondered, you know, geez, I think I can do that. That doesn't look too hard. So, then, you know, let me know if these videos help you out at all. If you're thinking about it, you know, go ahead down there and hit the like button if, if these videos add any value to what you're thinking of doing. You can see it's quite a little process to do it. The key to it, the key to stamping concrete, especially a walkway or a sidewalk or a patio, is it's all in the timing. I mean, you got to get on it at the right time. Sometimes it feels like it's a little too early to get on it, but when you know you've got to go from one end to the other, and you can see how much time it's taken to do that, you got to get on it sometimes a little earlier than what you think, so by the time you get down the other end, it's not too hard. Those stamps are pretty rigid. I mean, those are probably about three quarters of an inch thick. So they'll hold quite a bit of weight. And you'll be able to tell when, when you step on one, if it's too soft, you'll really be able to feel it sink under your feet. And if that does happen, then you just get off it and you just lightly tap it with your hands where you felt your foot sunk. And that should bring it back up to, to level so there's not a big dip in the concrete right there. But if this was your first time stamping, if you're thinking about stamping concrete, I wouldn't try a walkway this size. Maybe something like that little front entryway we're going to do. You got to get the hang of, you know, the timing. You got to get the hang of setting the stamp on there, how that feels, tamping it in, picking it up, moving it to the next section. And you definitely don't want to start on something out in the sun that's maybe a little bigger than what you should have. You can make a lot of money though if you're thinking of getting into stamping if you're in the concrete business already and you want to add this to your business you can make a lot of money doing stamping i talk about pricing and stuff in my in my private facebook group concrete ninjas so if you want to talk prices and stuff like that you can join that group just go to facebook and search under the groups for concrete ninjas and just ask to join and i'll make you a member you can also follow me. I, I put out all kinds of content about this stuff on Instagram, on uh, Twitter. So you can follow me on that stuff too. And I have a lot, some different content on there. But you can ask me questions on on those things. And you know, I, generally I try to get back to all my comments, even on these videos, as quick as I can. Sometimes it might take me a few days. Because as you can see, I'm out pouring concrete like this every day. We're either pouring stamp concrete or we're doing a concrete floor or a slab or something so I only have a, a couple nights a week and on weekends I can work on this stuff so we're almost done the walkway and as soon as we get done this we're gonna jump over and do that little entryway
but pouring stamp concrete it it there is a learning curve to it that's for sure it's a little different than just pouring a concrete floor or a concrete slab and finishing that smooth you definitely gotta you definitely gotta get out there and try it I mean it's, it is one thing to watch it you can learn a lot just from watching but you really need to feel the concrete and 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 how these things work on the surface of the concrete to get a good idea I mean when I first started I'm trying to remember back geez it was I've been doing concrete for 39 years but I didn't start out stamping 39 years ago I bet it was it might have been 10 years after I started maybe 29 years ago we started stamping and there was another guy that actually called us to help him and because it was a pretty big stamp job and he knew that we could lay the concrete down and get it get it poured and bowl floated pretty easy so he called us to help him pour it and then we stayed there and helped him stamp so that was how I got introduced to it and then and just from there then we started doing some of our own stuff after we saw that hey we could do this stuff so here's the little entryway we're gonna we're gonna put the dust to it called the release agent I'm using a charcoal colored release agent so it's kind of black and if you if you're thinking wow you're getting it all over the house yeah I know we are but we'll we come back the very next day so tomorrow we'll come back and we'll pressure wash this with Dawn dish detergent and a pressure washer and that stuff will clean right off the house with that I mean I guess I could have put plastic up but I can tell you what happens I've done that before if it's windy at all um, that plastic blows all, all over the place no matter how good you got it taped on there and then if it blows off then that's something else you got to worry about and then it always gets up under the plastic a little bit and you get some on the house anyway so we've learned that mo in most cases we don't poly stuff off unless we absolutely have to because we know how to clean it off I mean Dawn dish detergent works the best That video will be coming out next after this. That'll be part three, how to clean and seal the stamp concrete. So make sure you come back and check that out. That'll be coming out next. I'll also have a link for it down in the description. And it'll pop up on the end screen here on the video. So you can you could click over to it at the end after it comes out. You can see we're getting most of the stamps laid right out on this before I even start tamping. We're getting it all covered. And then I'll start tamping the impression in. To go up against the house, I, they have these really flexible mats that aren't as thick as the ones with these handles on them. So I'll be able to set that down where I need to and then bend it right up and get as much of the impression into the concrete as I can. And I have a little hand roller, kind of like a paint roller that has the texture on it. I I roll that edge first to get the texture on the concrete and then if I need to put some grooves in it with a slate pattern is I can I can groove those in by hand we have a little hand tool you can also get that'll cut the grooves in by hand so right now I'm tamping some of the texture in it with a little tiny texture mat they call it I gotta get under that shelf, that, that brick shelf a little bit. That's always kind of a pain to stamp under. That texture mat works pretty good. That, that'll put texture on just about anything you want before you put the stamps down. So this is about the right size for a beginner right here. I mean, you don't want to start with anything any bigger than this, especially if you're in up against some walls like that. You can see how I'm taking that flex mat and I'm going to end up, that'll connect right into the stamp just like these other ones connect with each other. You got to hold it the same way. And then you'll see how I'm going to flex it right in there. Just making sure I got all my pattern in there. 
here comes Darren and Luke. They were stamping something out back. That'll be a separate video that I'll show. That's a different pattern too. So they were stamping that back patio the same time I'm doing this one. Yeah, you can see I'm taking that flex mat now. And I'm setting that down in there and I'm tamping that down. Then I'm going to pick it up and move it over to the left and do that corner piece over there. So this is this is how you stamp a, a concrete walkway, a concrete sidewalk, or you know even a concrete entryway, a patio. Stamping is basically the same no matter what you're stamping. It all depends on the size of the area you're stamping. You know it depends on the weather a lot. See how flexible that thing is, and definitely makes e stamping easier if you have the right enough manpower. You know. So I'm cutting in the little grooves, the ones that didn't get in with the stamp, up against the wall under that little brick shelf with my little hand tool. And that's basically how you stamp concrete, guys. So make sure you check out part one of how we got this thing formed up. And then come back and check out part three of how we're going to clean and seal this so you can see the finished product. That's a big part of stamping too. You know, you got to get these things real clean, let them dry out, and you got to know what sealer to use and how to apply it. So in order to get the best job possible, that you got to put all those three things together. So that's it. We're getting the impressions in there. We're finishing off that, and uh, I'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.